Hong Kong's handover to China on July 1st, 1997 was a profoundly meaningful event on multiple planes of historical meaning. Uh, and like so many things with Hong Kong, I think it, uh, we have to carefully peel back these layers in order to understand the handover in all of its complexity. Uh, I think the, maybe the easiest way to think about it is in terms of concentric circles, the local impact on Hong Kong, the impact on China, and the impact on the world. Locally, I think the thing to emphasize is that this was an involuntary handover. Uh, it was decided by Beijing and by London, and no one ever really asked Hong Kong people what they wanted. And we have no way of knowing now what that would have been. Uh, the second is that it, the handover had this unusually long 13-year period of uncertainty before. Uh, the Sino-British Joint Declaration came out in 1984, and then the handover was in 1997, which left a lot of time for people to guess and wonder about what one country, two systems meant, whether it was uh, all a ruse, um, or whether it would have real meaning, and no one really knew. That translated culturally into that sense of uncertainty into a tremendous cultural watershed for Hong Kong uh, in terms of culture and identity, where Hong Kong people really started to see themselves in a new light and to value what was historical and specific to Hong Kong and to Hong Kong culture. Um, and so in terms of film and architecture and all sorts of areas of culture, there was a tremendous tremendous shift in, the in that period. And then of course politically, the area that is still most visible, uh, most contentious today about Hong Kong's handover. Uh, although Hong Kong had never been a democracy under British rule, both the Sino-British Joint Declaration and the last governor, Chris Patton, promised increasing democratization and made moves in that direction. But as we all know from the 2014 umbrella protests and the continuing debate over the election uh, of the chief executive, these things are not resolved and continue the uncertainty that has been present in Hong Kong for many decades now, a, a powerful sense of uncertainty about the future. For China, this was a tremendous moment of national pride and a symbolic victory over a century of humiliations. Uh, Hong Kong was a very important totem um, about a restored nation and overcoming a very painful history of humiliation um, and exploitation. Economically as well for China, the recovery of Hong Kong was a very powerful, uh, you, might, you might say catalyst, accelerating its export-driven development. And this had been happening since the late 1970s, um, but particularly after 1997, um, Hong Kong's first rank global capitalist networks were very powerful in allowing China to become the manufacturing powerhouse that we know to be today. As well as um, in terms of the realm of national reputation, the handover of Hong Kong and Beijing's successful stewardship or management over Hong Kong did more than anything else to rehabilitate China's image in the international arena after 1989 and the Tiananmen Square Massacre. So successfully managing Hong Kong has proven to a lot of skeptics around the world that China is a uh, responsible international power that abides by rules and laws and treaties. And finally, on the global scale, Hong Kong's handover is most frequently touted as the end of the British Empire and a moment of incredible significance for decolonization, this long process uh, that had reshaped all multiple continents. But in addition to that, Hong Kong's handover has important meanings globally, both economically um, and in terms of uh, migration, most especially in globalization. Uh, people forget that in the long period of uncertainty running up to 1997, around 600,000 Hong Kong people moved uh, out from Hong Kong to places such as Vancouver, Toronto, Australia, United States, New Zealand, and formed a whole new set of transnational bridges linking Hong Kong and China to the world through circulations of, of people 
goods, capital, uh, and so profoundly important engines of migration. Um, but as well, economically, we live in a moment where everyone is talking about globalization. Um, and when we talk about China's rise as a manufacturing powerhouse and lost jobs in the ind former industrial areas of the United States and England, as for example, uh, Hong Kong has a lot to do with it as a decisive broker that midwifed China's reemergence into the world and that its access, its expertise, its capital uh, were decisive in shifting and accelerating these processes. Uh, and so those are another set of ways that we can think about Hong Kong's handover as still significant today.